welcome to Once More With Feeling, Ruskaya Cosmo Politburo, the newest album from Ruskaya. Only recently found out that that's the proper pronunciation for that band's name. Oh, Ruskaya, I, I, I was just reading as Ruskaja, but yeah, yeah, that, make, that probably makes more sense. Yeah. Um, this week actually being joined by Richard because he knows a decent amount about the genre that Ruskaya falls into, which is ska. Uh, I'd like to think so. Uh, uh, I, of course, that was what I listened to a lot during my teenage years when a lot, when learning about music for me was largely built of searching up bands on YouTube. So uh, I'm not a, I'm kind, I am going to just preface this by saying I might be a bit of a basic bitch on this one. To, so do excuse me, but I'll do try to share what I know. <laughs> uh, the fact of the matter is, you know more than me, which is what I need. Oh, well, very well then. Um, th yeah, this band, uh, their origins are a bit confusing because they are technically a Russian band, but they come from Vienna. V Vienna, okay. Uh, their front man is from Georgia and... Most of the members, if not all the members, are from various parts of the Russian Federation and Russia itself, like Ukraine, Georgia, all that sort of thing. Um, but they all ended up coming together in Vienna, so go figure. Well, they certainly seem like a very interesting mix of an interesting mix of a group. I mean, as the the sound they make is very, very. They they have a lot of they've got a lot of. Uh, Power them, I guess. Yeah, I mean, this album is quite a bit different to previous albums because it's a lot more of a blending of different genres and styles, whereas previous albums were a lot more ska driven. Yeah, there does tend to be a it's kind of a thing with ska bands. A lot, there is a lot of playing with genre. A lot of, uh, I mean, it's in this case, it's quite a, it's kind of interesting since it's unusual for there to be quite so much variety within the scope of one album. But uh, I, I certainly did think of a lot of other groups when I was listening to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, some of the songs... Well, you gave me a bit of a crash course in the different waves of Scar, and this album feels like it kind of runs the gamut from first to third wave and does a good alternating effect between them. Yes, a lot of third wave stuff does sort of tend to harken back to the previous two. I mean... Uh, you can't really just drop that history outright, but of course, uh, I guess you'd... Huh, I say this like an expert on music, but uh, like how other... Mu I'm sure it happens within other genres, like... Uh, so I'm, I'd imagine the more... Uh, some of the more different sort of... Uh, dias the different diaspora of metal bands must harken back to more traditional forms of metal at times, or I suppose... Uh, I suppose R&B must... Some R&B artists must harken back to more traditional forms of R&B when they get to that kind of... <laughs> at various points. Mm. Um, you know, it's... I suppose that's uh, part of the cause in due time. Well, I mean, when it comes to metal, structurally, a lot of it harkens back to what could be classified as proto-metal in the forms of the heavier sorts of classical music, which uses the tritone and stuff like that, which is what metal is based in. Ah, interesting. The more you know. I <laughs> I was a little worried because I thought you were going to say something like, well, the minstrels with their lute <laughs> singing for Henry VIII were, were, the, were the progenitors of metal, and that is still clearly visible today, and I would have been very unprepared for that eventuality. What would I have said, what would I have said to that? I have no idea. Um, uh, yeah. Going into the album proper, um, some of the songs did have moments of making me go, wait, what? Like, um, Alive. Alive, yes. Now, that was a bit of a... Because a lot of it is sort of traditional folk sound with sort of scar inflections, which is kind of the reverse of what Ruskaya typically does. And then there are those breakdowns. I, just, I don't really know whether to, what to call it, but a breakdown is what springs to mind right off the bat. But yeah, it, I don't even know what to call that, uh, but it's... It's sort of like dubstep, but not quite. Um, I don't know what it's called. There's beep 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 sort of sounds. <laughs> but very, it's very sort of clubby, 
very, a very different kind of a kind of a person you imagine listening to that kind of music. It's probably not. It's like usually the, part of the same thing. It made me think. I, I apologize. I'm probably going to do this a lot, but I'm going to compare a lot to other ska bands. But it, it made me think. Uh, the first thing it made me think of was the track "Party Down" by Real Big Fish, which was uh, part of their first al- album as in, under an indie label after breaking from a big group and uh, it, you know, uh, in that case they went through all sorts of things through sort of country music to I can't even remember they they, they did so many uh, but I, I but uh, this is what I'm part of what I mean when I say they there's a lot of playing around with genre to be found um, for, in that sense it didn't surprise me very much but at the same time the immense slowdown threw me for a loop yeah yeah I mean because I'm not used to scar generally speaking Correction, I'm not used to third wave ska. Mm. I've listened to a fair amount of second wave ska, but third wave kind of passed me by. Well, being British, chances are you're probably going to have heard a lot more uh, uh, second wave than third wave, simply on the grounds that we are, this is the country (laughs) of second wave. Uh, Well... So maybe I shouldn't take that much credit, but, but you know, we are we were probably the, one of the primary influences of Second Wave Ska, and uh, you're going to hear it, I mean, Madness is still on the radio a lot, and, you know, there are there, a lot of the Ska bands that exist over here still, I think, have a lot of Second Wave uh, influence to them. Mm. Uh, but yeah, when they came, I suppose Trap Beats would be the best way to describe them. Perhaps. I mean, I don't listen to any trap music, so I don't know. I can't help but feel like if, if only Pierce were here right now, he'd, he'd probably know. Uh, but, um, whatever. When they came up, I was sort of like, wait, what? What? Yes, yeah, it was It was very interesting. Um, I actually quite liked that. I, I, as I said, it felt very playful. It, it's, uh, it's sort of kind of tongue-in-cheek, perhaps. Um... And it sort of gave me a good feeling of wh- where the where the album was going in a, in a way because while that while it didn't pop up again in that sense, uh, I definitely got the feeling that you know, be prepared. There's going to be a lot of uh, experimentation or di- uh, different sounds incoming. It was, a, it was a road sign for the rest of the album. Yeah, I mean, the whole album really feels like an experiment of sorts. Uh, if you consider songs like um you've got the first three or four tracks which are all in english yes which kind of surprised me i mean i've heard them do songs in english before but that was a bit well it was a very multilingual album yeah because you've got the first three tracks and cheburashka which are all in english um Hello Japan is in Japanese, in part, at the very least. Uh, let me just check. This is actually a rare time where I pre-ordered the album and it arrived on the day of release. That's pretty lovely. I love it. I, I love it when that happens. Yeah. Um... Not shelling Amazon Prime, I promise. <laughs> yeah, Hello Japan is a, I think, mixture of Russian and Japanese. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Um, Vole Kraft Voraus... Um, uh, well, I noticed a lot of Spanish over the course of the album. I'm not sure. I can't remember exactly which tracks were which in terms of language that they were in, but uh, the, the ones that they were, they were... There was a lot of Spanish. Yeah. Um, Volley Kraft Braus is quite obviously German. Um, Mare Mare is in Italian. Yes. Um, La Musica is the Spanish one. Yeah, I could have sworn there was another Spanish one, but perhaps I'm perhaps I'm mistaken. Perhaps it's just me getting muddled up with Mari Mari and sort of the the, the romantic languages. <laughs> yeah, uh, Mari Mari. Uh, at first, I thought it was in Spanish, but the fact that I didn't recognise any of the words kind of told me it wasn't, and it was actually Italian. Cause I know a fair bit of Spanish. I know, like, three words in Italian. Was mm-hmm. I'm trying to pick up what, like, which language Shift of the Cuisine is, but I can't... I thought I remembered it, but evidently I was wrong. Uh, Chef de Cuisine is a mixture of Russian and German. Ah, right, okay. <laughs> I think um, the singer's voice may, might have made it harder to pick out as well. He's The, the Russian sort of... Uh, rolling of the R's and things. Perhaps it, perhaps that led me to believe differently as well, but 
Oh my goodness, he has a fantastic voice there, doesn't he? Yeah. It re- <laughs> that's the kind of book. That's the kind of vo- voice I listen to audio books on for a long, long time. That that is. Uh... Yeah, it's kind of the hype man kind of voice, where it's just very bombastic and commanding. Yes, it's very rich and intense. It's ve- it's a very sort of full sounding voice, isn't it? Mm. Um. Just going through, is there a particular song you would say is a favourite of yours? Oof, um, I don't know about that yet. Um, I did really like Hello Japan. Um, I can't quite pick out what exactly it was about it, but uh, I definitely felt they picked up on... Uh, perhaps I'm completely way off on this, but it felt like they were picking up on uh, influences from Japanese ska in that track, and I, I, I do have a very strong fondness for Japanese ska. I say, <laughs> when I look at myself, I don't really have that many on there, but uh, th- there's a particular kind of sound, because as of Third Wave Ska, a lot of it originated in America, and there's a lot of American sound on the album, and uh, Japanese Ska bands often sort of pick up a lot of uh, American influence, as, as you would, carrying on the Third Wave trend, but there's, a, I, there's an extra something that I can't quite put my finger on. Uh, it's perhaps that it feels... Uh, a, lot of, a lot of Japanese Ska bands feel... Kind of, some, some of them are quite seamy, perhaps. But the trend that seems inherent to a lot of them is, uh, a lot of them feel more bouncy, perhaps. Uh, there's, as I said, I can't quite put my finger on it, but it feels like uh, Raskaya kind of tapped into it in this album, uh, with, with that particular track. And uh, I, I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. It was very, uh, I think it was, it felt like the most fun one to me, perhaps. Maybe I'm boring. <laughs> yeah, I can roll with that. Um, I'd say Cheborashka is one of my favourites because it um, it really did a great blending of the different sounds and styles. It's got all the ska inflections. It's Russian as fuck. Yes, yes. I suppose that's the setting point, isn't it, for a, for a Russian ska band? Yeah, and it's got hard rock breakdowns, which are a great surprise, but it's sort of like, oh, okay, I'm not complaining. Oh yeah, there was a lot of th- there are a few sort of tracks with hard rock influences. I think uh, send you an it. Well, uh, wait, no, sorry. I'm t- yeah, send you. No, sorry, I'm going, I'm going way off. I was going to talk about how uh, Americano is an influence that I kind of uh, cross the streams there. <laughs> don't cross the streams. Yeah, no, definitely don't do that. Um, it's between Cheburashka and. La Musica as to which are my favourites, because I have a great love of Spanish music. <laughs> what a surprise, the part Spaniard likes Spanish music. <laughs> mm. Yeah, again, it's a very good blending of styles and sounds. You've got the traditional Spanish music mixed with the polka and ska affectations. I think there's always been a, from at least the third wave, there's been a fair bit of uh, Spanish influence to begin with, simply because uh, a lot of the bands came out of California, which of course, uh, well, I, you know, California, quite, quite close to Mexico in that sense, you know, Mask of Zorro and all that. <laughs> Um, uh, it's, but yeah, it's, it's, so, it, I think they really took advantage of the, that kind of, of that aspect of Scar and just saw that, you know, it, it blends well with, um, Spanish music, perhaps, uh, I think that they uh, saw the Spanish influence inherent in Third Wave Scar and, uh, decided to play it up. It was very pleasant. <laughs> um, least favorite song on the album... Oh, oh, that's that's easy. I, I I feel like a bully now, but it's um, it's got to be still in love for me because while I really enjoy the track, I I do not believe you can keep that voice down with auto tune. There are some voices that auto tune can suit. I don't believe that auto tune should be is something that should be just kept off the table, but like oh that is dirty. But I didn't that some voices it works for well, some voices don't. This guy's voice uh, is just it chains it down. In my opinion. Yeah, also, I felt, it, well, it kind of had a bit of a cod reggae sound to it, if you're familiar with the term. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not. <laughs> uh, cod reggae is kind of the term used to apply to bands like The Police and UB40 and Men at Work, bands like that. 
What it immediately made me think of was Less Than Jake, because they, uh, that was a very well-known ska band that immediately springs to mind to when I uh, think of uh, sort of more easy-going, laid-back ska. I suppose you could say Sublime does that too, but they're, you know, they're, they're a bit kind of a different deal. Like, for, um, uh, The Signs of Selling Yourself Short, I guess, is the, the immediate one that springs to mind. Mm-hmm. In, in terms of how it's sort of chilled and mellowed out it is. I'm, uh, Less Than Jake fans, feel free to chill me out, ch- chew me out in the comments if I'm uh, screwing up horribly. But uh... Uh, I will agree. Still in love. I mean, for me, it didn't really feel suited to the band. It, it didn't really gel because their songs are generally very energetic and quite powerful vocally speaking so it felt quite off i understand what you're saying i think it's very definitely true that they specialize more in the more bombastic uh sort of over the top kind of energetic ska but i think that at the same time they, they it, every band's gonna need a bit of downtime on their album simply for to make the sort of the progression of the album feel right and uh it's sort of, it, for me i think sort of uh uh, still in love. Brit helps sort of, sort of. You can't sort of always be continually rising. Otherwise, <laughs> like, where would you be? Uh, I feel like it sort of helps to sort of, sort of uh, keep things steady before moving into the sort of the second act, I guess, of the of the album. Um, I get what you're saying. It's one of those cases of I'd personally cut it, but not because it's a bad song just because it belongs on another album yeah i feel it would be better placed on another album and there's also the problem that you know when a song feels like it could be a parody of the song that's being sung uh so perhaps it's the the fact that um when scar songs sound similar they sound really similar (laughs) Mm. Uh, you get the feeling where you listen to a brand new song sometimes and like I, I love ska I really do I really really do but uh, sometimes I, li- where I listen to a new song and I just think have I heard this before and it's because I guess I guess it, it, the style is re- quite baked in now and I, I guess that's why uh, novelty is so val- you know novelty or sort of having a special talent uh, or sort of something that really sticks out with is really important to a good ska band nowadays babs because um through three waves it's you know it's kind of uh, become almost sort of set in stone i mean a lot of people go when's the fourth wave gonna happen but i have to think you know uh, how much further you can be taken than this i mean you were saying about how first wave ska was essentially sort of inverse reggae in style <laughs> yeah yeah um so something like that yeah that's uh, i think those were probably like, were my words yes and uh that's uh probably about right i say not being not being an expert but yes it, the, the way it's, it, it all comes down a lot of it comes down to scar guitar uh because of course wall horns were a thing you know were a thing a lot of the time back then they weren't as inherent to the genre as they do seem to be now yeah Second wave, that's when you saw the introduction of horns in a more front-of-stage sense. Yeah, and uh, that's where the punk elements start to come in as well. And then by third wave, you've got <laughs> horns are all, horns in almost every band. Very, very strong punk influences. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's one of those, where do you go from here? Well, that's why bands like uh, Raskaya is so important, I guess, because that, that's where you start to see things, seeing things like folk influences and things. You know, it, get, it gives people guidance. It may not necessarily be where the genre as a whole has to go, but it's uh, it's definitely a sort of uh, perhaps a welcome reprieve from uh, the, the the punk trappings of the genre. I mean, as m- <laughs> uh, I definitely think there are be there, there are tracks with punk influence in Raskaya stuff, and that's and that's still well and good because you know at this point I started listening to ska through Third Wave, um, which might be a shame to British ska fans, but you know that's uh, I started listening to it because I like the punk influences as well. Uh, you know, it's not something I want to see leave, but <laughs> uh, when you've got that much sort of, I guess, densely packed in kind of information, it's kind of 
the, it feels like the more you add, like the more you add horns, the more you add different, like different genre influences, the more kind of a heavy load it feels like the the like every second of music has to bear. Um, perhaps uh, I will say this: Ruskaya's sound is very intense because uh, the the singer's the, the singer's vocal, you know, his his voice is very powerful and and sort of full and you know it sort of it reverberates through everything and uh, to keep up with that they have the uh sort of quite heavy guitars as well i feel like in some places but, and and they have that really blaring kind of raspy horn sound uh the first thing it makes me think of is probably something like streetlight manifesto which is probably which is a far more punky one but they, they, they have a similar kind of level of intensity um both i, I really like both streetlight manifesto and uh Ruskaya, but uh I say, <laughs> I say that with this being my first Sky album, but uh, what I was going to say was, uh, being as intense as they are, uh, if they're quite heavy listening, and I, I find myself wanting a break after a while, simply because it feels like it's a lot to take in. And uh, the other thing I was going to... The, uh, forgive me for going on a bit of a soliloquy here, but, like, um, the interesting thing is, I d it's very much the sound and the uh, music and the mixing that makes the that the uh, horns and you know the, the brass section as as powerful as it is. Because I mean, like you can look at something like the Tokyo Ska Paradise Orchestra, which is like a twenty-two piece uh, uh, ska band. Is by all means, you'd think, oh, it's going to be like overpowering, overpowering horns, like that one College Humor Too Many Ska Horns video. Uh, but they have a far milder sound because you know uh, because of the way it's mixed. You know they have probably more ska, they probably have more brass than than uh, Ruskaya does, but it doesn't come out across as quite as uh, as weighty. Um, sorry, I don't know where I was going perhaps with that, but it's it's, it's definitely a part of their appeal. But it and, and it's but it's it's something that I found very uh, that I found very uh, overpowering. Um. Yeah. That's actually why I kind of feel like Send You an Angel would be better placed earlier in the album. Uh, is that so? Just, you mean to, sort of, to assume that the position of, the, of, of where uh, Stern Love is as a sort of a, a calming kind of I think. Yeah, because the thing is, it feels too somber as a last track, given the nature of Ruskaya. I I guess so. There's ending up. I, guess, I suppose it, it comes down to the choice. Do you end on a high, or do you end on do you or do you want to chill out everyone afterwards? Hmm. Well, that's the thing. What I mean is, it feels like something cheerful should come after it because it doesn't really feel calming for me. As I say, it feels much more sombre. It does feel somber, I suppose so. But I guess what's important to me is that the fit, the fact that I could feel my heartbeat slowing down as I listen to it. That was the effect, I guess, that that was I meant. Yeah, uh, I guess it's one of those things where, considering I listen to a lot of metal, I'm very used to albums ending on the big, bombastic, explosive note. I mean, there are exceptions, as with anything. It's just more common for metal albums to end that way. I guess so, but there are... Uh, I think one thing that perhaps I didn't show you before was the fact that there are a lot of uh, ska bands with some more, sort of quite sort of negative, uh, or sort of quite sort of downbeat kind of um, sort of messages, or sometimes, you know, it's reflected in, in, the, in the sound as well. Uh, one thing... Ahem... <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Just off the top of my head, I suppose you could say the Mighty Mighty Boss Stones, whilst they, you know, like, one of their songs, their most well-known song, probably, uh, the impression that I get, is a really upbeat sounding song, but it's all about, um, boy, I sure, I hope I never face, <laughs> like, really bad adversity, I hope I never fall into a terrible trap where something goes wrong, but, like, their whole album, where that's from, uh, you know, their, one of their songs is... Uh, all about uh, being mugged and beaten up and getting a bunch of broken bones, but feeling bad for the guy who did it because he was doing it for drug money, or uh, and things like that. You know, but, um, uh, or Sublime, one of the most sort of well-known bands of all time, uh, ska bands, is I sh I shouldn't avoid saying of oh, all time like I'm f like I'm you know um, 
Beyonce's album is the greatest of all time, Kanye West. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of their songs are quite dour as well, sort of talk, like, Wrong Way is a, you know, is a, is a miserable song. Uh, Santa Ria is not, perhaps not miserable, but kind of, kind of resentful, perhaps. You know, th th there's a lot of that kind of, uh, some Sky can get quite dour, I suppose. And I feel like, I feel like, in a way, the, it does suit Raskaya in the sense that I feel uh, the vocal. I'm sorry, I can't remember the vocalist's name, but if the vocalist, his he, his voice does sound a lot to me like the Boston's his own uh, Dickie Barrett, very uh, sort of gravelly and uh, kind of, uh, or sort of, uh, kind of gritty, I guess. <laughs> is is that a rude thing to say? I don't. I hope not. But uh, but. Uh, Nah, um, it would be rude if you were saying edgy. Edgy? <laughs> yeah, that would, that would be mean. That would be mean. But no, it's, uh... Yeah, yeah uh, the lead singer's name is Georgi. Georgi. Right, yeah, yeah. Georgi Alexandrovich Makazaria. God... I'm sure that's just like calling him Tom Smith if it was if it was England, but that, that's a heck of a name to us. Well, I mean, if you consider that Yuri is the Russian equivalent to George. Ah, uh, fair, fair, fair. It kind of sucks the weight out of things like Yuri's revenge. George's revenge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> George's revenge. He's been a very naughty boy. I told you not to get revenge on the. <laughs> yeah, slipping into the life of Brian there for some reason, I guess. I, uh, but. Yeah, yeah. And meanwhile, an old comedy line Yuri, don't do that. It suddenly becomes very menacing. It certainly does. But anyway, enough of that tangent. Um, final thoughts on the album? It is. Very well rounded. I feel like they cover all the bases, uh, you know, from as the somber stuff that maybe <laughs> maybe are not so fond of to the very energetic stuff. Uh, heavy sounds, light sounds, like um, the oh, which one was it? The one that you liked, Chebrashka. Uh, I felt had a, felt to me like a in contrast to all my sort of, oh, streetlight manifesto, very heavy kind of comments. I say uh, I say like I dislike that, but I I I, I love it. But uh, uh, it made me think. That track made me think of a lot of the Aquabats, and so you know, I feel like if they cut with and with that, they covered it all. There was there were heavy parts, there were light parts, there were sort of fast parts, slow parts. You know, playing around with genre, you know, more modern things, more traditional sort of folksy things. There's something for everyone. I would have said, well, as long as you like ska, that is. But <laughs> I would have said there's something for there's something it caters to everyone. Yep, I mean, it's a great album. Whilst I have certain misgivings about Still in Love and Send You an Angel, which I'd cut and rearrange respectively, overall, it's a brilliant album. It certainly is. Um, doing the usual rating, I'd probably give it a 3.5, possibly a 4 out of 5. Hmm. Uh, I don't know where I'd put it. I'd definitely give it a, probably a 4. Maybe even a little higher. I re I <laughs> as a ska fan, I, I I adore it. It's fantastic. Um, I, I agree in the, that there are a few things that maybe could be changed, but honestly, I I feel like it's one of these things where you gotta where you gotta roll with the punches in sort of. And uh, I feel like even the things I don't like perhaps add to the album. <laughs> uh, but maybe 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 that's me being showing preferential treatment to. Scar Rans, but uh, I, I don't know. I, it's fantastic. I think, ultimately, if you're saying that there's only one song, uh, in my case, there's only one song I would outright cut out of ten. Well, I don't know if you'd even want to outright cut it, would you? You'd probably just say, go go back and remove that auto-tune filter. <laughs> Isn't it? But... Yeah. Um, I mean, I do have a bit of a problem with the lyricism because it does feel a bit samey to other songs but 
be that as it may, it's not like I'd rip the CD out of the player and throw it out of my car whilst driving if it came on, or tear the radio out of my car if I heard it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'd say that it, it, it does a good job of sort of... I felt like it was worth keeping a lot of these things, simply because a lot of it was all the stuff, but I feel like the the new things it adds, and the and the, that, that Russian spin, uh, it's... It, I guess you could say it's, it brings a lot to the table, even if it isn't a, uh, excuse me, permanent revolution. <laughs> uh, but it, yeah, no, it, was, it really is a, a stunningly well-balanced album that I, I couldn't have asked for more, really. Yeah. Um, as what is essentially my very first Scar album, you know, I bought it, I listened to it from beginning to end, that sort of thing. As my very first Scar album, this is a great beginning. It is a very good beginning, yeah. Um, I hope I, I hope to see <laughs> to some more different Scar stuff in the future, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I do like Scar. It's not like I'd go, ooh, no, not covering that again, or anything like that. I mean, I wouldn't actively go in search of Scar bands if I didn't enjoy it. Yeah, well, very good news to hear from, <laughs> on my part, then. Yeah. Um... That's it for this episode. Uh, next episode will be one of three things. Either the new Vast EP, although that's still in the fucking mail, so probably have to follow that up. Or either the new Cell Dweller album or the new Winter Sun album, which will both be back with Pierce. We're a few weeks out. Pierce has been bogged down with work. Although that's not the reason that Richard is joining me this week. It's actually because... He knows more about Scar than pretty much anyone I know. I know I, I know I don't pop on here very often, given that my expertise in music is fairly limited. But I hope I hope listeners enjoyed hearing me talk about something that wasn't uh, idle shit or my horrible Demba garbage or something like something like that. This is uh, this is this is a sound that I, uh, I I learned about you know in my uh, teenage years before I learned about all the all of my uh, weeaboo garbage. So. Um, Hopefully, this is music you unironically enjoy. Uh, I, I, f <laughs> you can't see me, but I'm mopping my brow right now because <laughs> there's a lot of idle and bad stuff that I know is kind of bad, but I like very unironically. So uh... yeah, well, there's a lot of Katy Perry songs that I like unironically. So, <laughs> oh. <laughs> But I think most of you have probably only mo really told me, heard me talk about heard me talk about my garbage taste before, so uh, I'm uh, I'm glad be, but to have been able to share this, and I hope and I hope that uh, uh, you get to hear me talk about some more of that stuff in the future. Yeah, um, wrapping up, it's goodbye from me, and it's uh, goodbye from him, I guess. <laughs> Hi, hi, hi.